so everything is put back together. Everything is nice and dandy and tight. And this is the ultimate test. Boy Precision Connections at PrecisionConnectionsAuto.com where the right connections are the only connections. Today we have a Viper 5305V which is a two-way pager remote start system. Comes with one pager alongside with a standard one-way remote. For my immobilizer bypass, I'm using a iDatalink ALCA unit, which is pretty decent for this particular model. I prefer the um, Express Kit from DEI. It has a 128-bit memory bus, as well as a stronger or faster processor, but that's in another video. That's a different, whole different So we got the Viper 5305V, and I already prepped the wiring. Got everything all nicely taped up. All my branches coming out. So I'm just gonna do a straight install video, wire to wire install video for you guys. Cause a lot of guys have this particular vehicle and I'm getting so many requests to do this, this particular video. So might as well just first do thing it. first, you gotta take off this shroud. So this little tab right here, you want to get your little flathead and you just stick it in there. Bring that up a little bit. That pops up on that side. That's my left driver's side. And let me get over here. You want to do the same to the passenger side. Just pop that up. Behind this is going to be two hidden Phillips head screws. You want to just bang those screws out. And before that, you want to go underneath here and just pull this so you can have, you can pull out the steering column a little bit. So you just want to lift this up so you can expose the two Phillips head screws. I like to use hand tools when I'm doing my um, installation because the majority of you guys don't have power tools so this will give you like a realistic feel or look or whatever to the video all right so that I gotta remove this screw I'm actually trying to use the, f the viewfinder on the camera to see what I'm doing just so that I get all the pictures and get all the proper focus and all that stuff. All right, so we knock out these screws. So you just so wanna grab this screw right here, this Phillips head. Let me just get that in there. We just gonna yank this whole steering column cover off. I don't think you have to, on this particular car, you don't have to take off the, um, you don't have to take off the lower panel. It's not necessary. I mean, you could if you want to, you know, but I don't take them off. I just loosen this. Falls right down. You got all the necessary wires to do your insulation. And that's about it. So pretty much with the bypass module, with this iDatalink bypass module, you can get everything from here. Brake, parking lights, door locks, all that from the steering column. So this is like a 20 minute job for a person like me with the experience. With someone without experience, uh, maybe two and a half hours to do this, but it is so simple. Let me show you guys how I do it. All right, so I got my, my whole remote start wired up. This is the whole remote start. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it trying to get it up here. Like I said, it's hard to do the video. So you guys just bear with me. So 
So like that. So I'm just gonna use the whole length. What I like to do is I, I will take my shortest wire because I want to have as much length as possible. I mean, they give you all the, the wires, might as well just use them instead of cutting them and making it short where you gotta, you run into the risk of, of getting the wire caught into anything. I'll take first the shortest wire, which in this case, my pink, this little thin pink is my shortest wire. So it's and going that's to going my immobilizer system. Yeah, I can't. Uh, so I'll run that to here and then I'll cut the rest of my wire. Yeah, so I basically, when I'm running my wires, I like to keep stuff real organized. My zip ties. So I'm just going to grab a zip tie. Just zip tie that straight like this. All right, so I got my wires branched out like so. And this is gonna run all the way down the ignition column this way. Everything is in the right order. All right, so what I'm gonna grab now, as far as wires is concerned, is the ignition harness. The stand wheel. This is I'm gonna get my horn from right here. All right, this yellow wire you don't need to disconnect. That's just the airbag thing, and you don't really need anything from there, so don't even take it down. So, I'm gonna cut this, because I'm gonna grab horn from here. So, you strip it like that. Pull away this tape. This is my immobilizer harness right here. This is gonna be connected to my flash logic or iData link module. it got my ignition harness again you don't want to pull too hard on these you just want to be extra careful not to damage anything all right so first thing first I want to grab my my 12 volt wire which is this white wire right here and I'm just how I do my wiring is You just bite with the strippers. You get your little thing. Like that. You pull back the wires like so. And it comes off real easy. Just like that. So, I poke my hole. Nice and wide. You get my power wire which is this fat red wire. I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of slack just in case you don't want it too tight. And you just throw it in, so. Just twist it up a little bit. You put it inside the wire. And you just wrap it around. So this is somewhat of a military um, splice, I guess. Somewhat. Military splice, you got to go more in depth with your the length of wire. But this is just going to give me a solid connection. Soldering is better. But it's not practical to solder when you're doing this on a professional level. 
but if it, if you're in your own garage and it's your vehicle and you have time to do it all day then by all means you can go ahead and solder all right so this white wire is connecting to this red wire which is your 12 volt source which is going to power up everything so your next wire you're going to want is your ignition so ignition on this car is blue so you're going to do the same thing you're going to take your strippers you're just going to bite you're not going to strip you're going to bite one two that's it and then you just go right through the middle you peel it the the insulation back comes right off bad you poke your hole through you grab your ignition wire which in this case all viper ignition wires are pink you want to give yourself a little length cut it like so you drag the wire back twist it up you throw it behind this wire right here so once you tape it up it's going to be all sweet and dandy then you just want to get all the wires neat packed into place and use the tape to seal every little thing up you feel me Again, subscribe to the channel Precision Connections at PrecisionConnectionsAuto.com where the right connections are definitely the only connections. So, our next wire is going to be accessory, which is... So, this is my accessory. This is going to be my greenest starter. So, I'm going to cut this wire in half. And I'll show you guys why. This is my ignition. Yellow is my second ignition. So all you guys got to do. Do two clips. One, two. Just to bite into the insulation. And then you just pull it back like that. Slide it like so. And you just pull it back. That's it. That's basically it. This you want to strip back. This is my starter wire. You want to also strip this back. So, okay, so I'm going to connect my ignition first. That's this wire. I'm going to come up from the bottom. I'm going to drill my little hole. I don't know. I might fast forward this. I might do two videos. I might do a fast forward version. And then I might do all. Yeah, I'm going to do a, a fast forward version on some of the parts to shorten down the video. Just the basics. And then I'm going to leave the raw long version for you guys that just want to be entertained. So this red wire right here connected to my pink coming off of my 5305V is... The ignition wire this is the first ignition this is what's going to control my injectors fuel pump etc etc all the major stuff this yellow right here is my second ignition so what you want to do is find second ignition from your remote start system which in my case is the pink with the yellow stripe on it you just want to slide it back boom, twist it up a little bit and then you just throw it right 
in the, the hole that we just poked. So this pink with the white stripe on it is going to the yellow on the ignition harness. And we just wanna just tighten up these fray edges. This way it doesn't poke through the tape. All right. And then you can just get this much, this amount of tape, and you throw it right over the wire. Perfect installation. I can use I usually get my connections from the bottom but for just to show you guys the um where exactly you're getting your wire this is for video purposes only I usually get my wires much lower but it wouldn't make sense to do it that way so this is basically the long way but it's best to learn using the long way. This way you could be like, when I say ignition harness, you know this is the ignition harness. So forth. Right, let me get my, my pokey tool. All right, so let me just poke a hole up in here. Ba -ba 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 bam That's my accessory. Accessory from the remote start is, boom, orange. Take your... Cutters, boom. You slide it back like so. You twist it up. Ba -ba 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 -bam. You throw the wire through the hole. You wrap it up. And then you just slide a little tape over it. Just make it nice and tight. You want to be able to stretch the tape as far as you can stretch it. So you get a good connection. Alright, so here's the last part as far as the mission is concerned. What you want to do is you want to make sure you make a good connection here. Because this is your starter wire. I just cut it. So this is my starter kill wire. And also, you got to get the correct orientation of these wires. So, the purple is your starter wire. And this is going towards the starter. So, you want to connect this like so. You want to get a good, good amount of twist. And what I do is I bend it backwards. And then I bend it forwards and bend it backwards again. This way, it's hard to be yanked out. And you just slap some tape around it. Don't, in, in my opinion, I don't like butt connectors, those yellow connectors, because they can fall off. This is a more stable connection under soldering. This is my ignition side, so green is going to go to green. It's going to go to the harness side. So you got your green coming from the remote start, and that's going to the harness, which is going into the key cylinder. And I don't know if I can get a good focus in. So you want to... All right, so you got your two wires in like this. So you want to cross, cross again, cross again, cross again, cross Flip, cross, and flip. And see, the wire is not going anywhere. And the tape is just going to add even more stability. So this wire is never going to vibrate off. It would have to be yanked with a tremendous amount of force. Almost the amount of force to, to rip this whole wire out of the, the connector. See, look, if you see the connect, you see how it's wiggling from here. So this is definitely a good connection. All right, so now those are done. I tend to leave a little bit of slack on these wires. 
you know, just in case, just in case, just in case something does pull on it, it'll have some play. So I want to give this more play than the rest of the wires, because then the tension, there's no tension from the main harness on the starter kill wire. So I'll tape this up. Get these wires out of the way. Subscribe to my website. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This wire right here, we're not using it. You can simply cut it off. using the brown is for ground so I'll probably just use uh, I don't like brown for ground all right I'll just ground to chassis just for, for video sake all right so this this ground wire this ground wire I use you can usually just grab this brown wire right here but for perp for the video purpose, I'm just gonna mount it to chassis ground so it, it doesn't confuse you guys. All right, let me just get some more tape right here. So we have the ignition knocked out, so we can um we can tape up the ignition. And then we can put it back. You always want to put back wires after you use it. This way you don't forget a wire or a harness. So you always want to plug the harness back after you completely finish with the harness. Just put it back. Put it back. So this is my starter feed going to my starter from the remote start. And I'm just going to leave this hanging out. To give it some kind of play just as an added precaution All right, so I'm gonna plug that back in snaps back in like so this we can neaten up a little more later on or eh, maybe we could just take care of this right now okay so boom that's done the ignition portion is done so this is my horn and my horn on this car is orange so this is my horn this orange wire right here you gotta strip this these down. little wires i just strip them back i don't even bother with pull you can do it that way with the two grabs and splice Eh, whatever. But what I do is I poke this hole and I can actually test the horn. So that's my horn wire. And all I did was I don't recommend this, but being I know this car and I know that this is basically the horn wire. So what I just did was took the horn wire and just tapped it to the metal. And that was basically it. All right, so the horn wire on the Viper system is brown with the black stripe going down on it. I think this video is turning out well. Hmm. Let me find out I'm shooting good videos now. Before, my videos were horrible. But you guys stuck with me, so I appreciate that. Now I'm getting a little better with my videos. My videos are more in-depth and detailed. 
So this is the horn wire. So I'm gonna slap the tape over here onto the horn wire. That's gonna. That's it. So I'm done with this harness. That's all I need from here. I just need my. That's all I need from this. So. I'm just going to leave this loose. I'm not going to plug this harness in. Because I don't want it to. You see this thing is kind of loose. The clock spring. I do not want to damage the clock spring. Accidentally. So I'm just going to leave that out. For now until I'm done. Completely. With the um. With the immobilizer, which is next. Okay, so now we got to go into our immobilizer wires. And this is the immobilizer harness right here. This black, black harness right here. This is something else. I don't know what it is, but that's what it is. So, Honda CRV. Key data is going to be my first connection. And key data is yellow, which is this wire right here. If I can just get it. So this is my key data. And I'm just going to slide this back. This is just a wire that I need to tap into. This is going to give the immobilizer system. It's basically going to trick the immobilizer system into thinking that there's a key in the car by feeding back the copy code to the car's computer, which is going this way, not this way. This is the reader, and that's the receiver. So we're going to go in between the receiver with the data wire coming off of the remote start, which is... Or the bypass module, which is this orange with the black stripe on it. So I'm just going to strip that back. I should have cut that can wire. So I'm going to strip that back. I'm going to do the same twist. Damn, my camera is messed up. We got to do, let me set up my camera. So we're going to do the same twist. Then we're going to feed it into the thing like that. Wrap that up. Now that's a military splice. <laughs> All right. I know this video is kind of boring. I'm getting bored. Hope you guys aren't bored. But if you are, then I don't know what to tell you. This ain't no comedy channel, boy. This is this is educational channel. All right, so um, we go grab the can bus wire. Can high on this car is pink. Can low is blue. So it's gonna be these twisted pair right here. These are my can wires right here, and that's gonna give me my door lock data, as well as my factory arm and disarm. As well as my parking brake, my foot brake, my trunk, my hood, my my everything. Alright, so I'm going to have to strip this back. These wires are kind of tiny. So you're going to need about a 22 gauge minimum stripper. This is a 22 gauge, but it's worn out being that I had it for so many years doing so many cars. So it's time to upgrade. So can high is brown with the red stripe on it brown with yellow brown with red so i want to unify these wires to get them close as possible together because they are transmitting data cut them to about the same length you always want them to be about the same length 
so that you don't introduce any noise into the data system. And what this basically is, is just like your USB connection on your computer. Those two wires, you have a positive and you have a negative. So in this case, CAN bus high, which is the brown with the yellow stripe, or in your, if you want to call it tan, I call it brown, you may want to call it tan. With the red stripe is your high, which is positive on your USB connection. And yellow, brown with the yellow stripe is low, which is negative, like what's negative on your USB connection at home for your PC. Same concept, exact concept. So now, like I said, CAN bus high in this case is pink. So I'm going to connect the brown with the red to pink. Yeah, it's basically the same. Just like your um, the USB connection where you have the green and then you have the white. I think white is positive and green is negative. Don't quote me on that. I'm not really a computer dude. I could be wrong. But I, I think positive positive data is white and negative data is green. But I know for a fact that those those wires ride against each other. Like it will ride the negative will ride on the negative and the positive will ride on the positive. Yeah. I think don't quote me on that. Could be wrong about the um the white being positive and the green being negative but I know they write on the same line like negative or write on negative positive write on positive so now you just want to slap some tape to secure that connection okay so that's that ideally you want to ground the remote start in my case, I didn't ground the remote start first, but it's not a big deal because I have the bypass module unplugged. But if you have the bypass module plugged in, you always want to ground first. This way you don't throw off the module during programming. All right, so we have one more connection with this, and that's the um, ignition turn off. So ignition in this harness is dark blue which is this wire right here what we got to do is we're going to cut it in half the reason why we're cutting it in half during the remote start sequence we don't want power going into this module or the module right here we want to turn it off we don't want to get two signals going into the um the computer we just want one signal so we're going to turn the power off on this by cutting it in half and feeding it to a relay. So the relay is going to disengage during remote start and engage, meaning engage in contact. During remote start, it's going to engage, it's going to disengage. Sorry about that. During remote start, the relay inside the bypass module is going to disengage turning this off so that it can feed its own signal via data into the main computer of the vehicle. So now I'm just going to cut these to be even. I'm going to strip them down. And strip them down like so. And I'm going to connect I'm going to connect the red, the white with the red stripe to the ignition sign. So you're going to take white with red and you're going to put this wire together. The reason why we're connecting this together is because when the car sees ignition, the ignition is sending power to the bypass module 
ignition power, not 12 volts. It's sending the ignition power to the bypass module. So this is the vehicle side. So 12 volt key is coming up into this wire. So as the ignition sends the power up until here, it's going to go back into the bypass module. And the bypass module is going to see that the ignition is on. This, on the other hand, is just the relay switch. So this is going to sever the connection between these two points. So when the remote start is engaged, these two points are going to be disconnected. When the remote start is disengaged, then it's going to be connected back together like so via the relay that's built into the module. If you didn't understand what I just said, hit me up in the comment section below. All right now. So I'm just gonna slap a little tape on this end. Okay, like, like so. Slap a little bit of tape on the other end. So everything is done. So you just gotta neaten everything up like that. So what I like to do is leave my slack within the harness. This way, if it ever gets pulled, you won't have that all oh ish moment because it's gonna be embedded in the harness so if it gets pulled it's going to be like that at least you got some kind of play i love to give myself a little bit of play so i'm just going to wrap it up nice and neatly like so slap some tape i'm gonna slap some tape around there like that ba bam all right so that I could just plug this in. So this is my um, steering wheel clock spring connection. That's in. And then we have our immobilizer connection. Then I'm just going to tap in right here. I slap that slid it in. These wires I don't need. This is my siren wire, which I guess I have to run up. So that's this is the siren that's coming from the, under the hood. And so this is my siren wire. It's already grounded underneath the hood. That's another thing that could be disputed, but it works. What I mean by disputed is some people like to ground it with the alarm together. Siren is siren. It's not really an important thing that's going to cause any issues. So you just heard my siren go off. The reason why it went off because there's no ground on the system. So it's pulling ground from wherever it could get ground. So um, that's why you're hearing that sound. But as soon as I ground the remote start, that noise will go right away. These I don't need. Just clip them off. This I could just fold back like so. So, so once I ground it, it will shut the hell up. It will shut the heck up, I mean. See? Alright. So if you ever have a background, then you know 
I mean, if you ever hear a siren going off like that, very low, then that means you have a bad ground. Let me just get some zip ties in here. Hopefully this should be a good video. I might start doing all my videos like this. Alright. This is my parking lot. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to run it back up. Beep. 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 So I gotta find a good ground that's nearby on the chassis. So I have a ground right here. Okay, got a ground. Hmm. Okay, I got good ground here. Just a matter of me getting my. Um, Got my ground. I just need a loop. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. <coughs> so I'm just going to crimp this ground wire on here like so. I know you guys are tired of hearing that. That alarm. Alright, so I'm going to go up, around. Come on. This is one of the awkward moments. Now, let me get my... Okay, we got that bad boy mounted. 
We got that bad boy in the bad boy in the house. Bad boy in the uh, 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 uh. Alright, so we wanna go up here. Cause I gotta get to the parking lights. You gotta get that parking light. Pull this bad boy out. Don't worry, I'll be up there. Alright. Gotta edit the crap out of this shit. All right, so we're back into old school mode with the camera in one hand and the wiring in the other hand. So your parking light is this blue wire right here. And wow, how was I able to fit that in? All right, as the camera tries to autofocus, I will try to twist this wire with one hand, which by now I'm usually used to doing. It takes me, it takes a person a while to get used to twisting the wires with one hand. Alright, so that, I'll just slap it back there. And then I'll just slap some tape on there. So I'm going to slap the tape on there. That'll so everything's about. put back together. Everything is nice and dandy and tight. And this is the ultimate test. <coughs> Ta da! See? Shut it off. Let it run again. And that's it. Step on the brake. We shut down. And subscribe, subscribe, and definitely subscribe.